Well, we're back here on Let Me Live on KUWB. It's Mondays with the Mayor and Mayor Andy Somerville is in studio with me. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Not too bad. It is a Monday, though, as I always like to say with you. Uh, of course, big discussion here that's come up recently has been the closure of 15th Street. And obviously, there's a lot of talk about that, a lot of talk amongst the community. And obviously, you guys are talking with the university. So where do we, where do we begin with something that was brought up as kind of a footnote at the end of the legislative session, I know you mentioned it briefly back in our March conversation, but now all of a sudden it's come full throttle. Where are we at with the conversations? Well, so um, last week we had our meeting, joint meeting with the University of Wyoming. We had several of their staff members uh, come and sit with our staff and the city council. And so we had our first discussion about what, what are we really looking at here. Um, the university has a couple of goals that have been directed by the legislature. One is pedestrian safety. The other one is, of course, looking at unification of the campus. 15th Street is obviously a really big divider. Um, and then from the city side, we discussed with them what we really are concerned about, what we're looking at, which is, of course, major impacts to our traffic system, um, inconveniencing a lot of people, changing the way the city kind of flows. That's a main arterial street through Laramie, so it would be a big change. So. We sat down with them, we talked about a lot of different options. We talked about a full closure, we talked about no closure, we talked about partial closures, um, timed closures, and we also talked about an underpass overpass situation, which would probably be the grandiose construction project solution to that. We talked about all of that. Sounds like no matter what happens though, we're talking about some way, somehow, there's gotta be some influx of money to make this happen, whether it's a no-go in terms of diverting traffic east and west and that's quite a that's quite a lengthy spot or the overpass underpass that you're talking about well money is a big factor in this discussion um, obviously if the legislature really wanted us wants us to close 15th street the cheap option is just to close 15th street and maybe do landscaping over it however that really doesn't um, deal with any of the issues that the city has on our side so for one of some of the more extravagant ideas, you know, the underpass overpass situation, which would accommodate both ideas, um, that one's got a big price tag. And so I think part of this process, as well as we're gonna go through and vet out the data, the traffic data um, over the next couple of months, our UW, the UW staff and the city staff are gonna work together over the next few months to vet out all those different scenarios, what the impact could be, what that looks like. And when we take this report back to the legislature, I think that that cost piece has to be a very big piece of the discussion with them and to see, I know the city's not in a position to do a major construction project like that. Um, I won't speak for the university, but they certainly seem to have some budget issues of their own. And so we may have to be talking to them about money and saying, well, this is the optimal solution, but it requires this much money. What do you guys think? It seems like this kind of caught you guys off guard because this came from not even any of the representatives in the community. Absolutely. Um, this was not on the city's radar at all. Um, and to the best of my knowledge, not on UW's radar at all. We really kind of got caught uh, by surprise coming out of left field from the legislature to have a footnote like this come in. And it, it was a, an interesting watching the discussion at the legislature because they took it out initially um, from the House side voted the footnote out and the Senate side overwhelmingly voted the footnote out. And then when the final budget bill came back, the footnote came back. And so it seems to be contentious over in Cheyenne as well. So. It's a little trying to judge the direction of, of where that direction is coming from, what the concerns are. That's been a difficult part of this process. As well, well, it's been one of those topics that's exploded on our social media platforms because people are going, well, that means you're going to push us all the way down to 4th Street, east to 22nd, and it can make it difficult to access the north side of town, let alone the north side of campus, if you've got a kid maybe at the lab school or something. Well, absolutely, and, and community members are absolutely correct in their concerns, and we've certainly heard those as well. I've gotten a slew of emails and phone calls, um, everybody concerned about the possibility. One of the things I do want to reassure everybody is we're not closing 15th Street today. This is just a conversation right now, um, and it's in a conversation, I think, that we need to continue that community input. I think that's one of the most important pieces that I, as the mayor, can take to the legislature to say, you asked, UW and the city sat down and did the logistics, but this is what we heard from the community members. And community members include people that are employed at UW. We want to hear from student members, students there. We want to hear from people that just happen to travel that corridor periodically. Well, it's one of those streets that I typically kind of avoid, but every once in a while you, you, you get, you got to take that route because it's the most direct route or maybe the one you think might take the least amount of time. The other thing I think 
is interesting about this is looking at it from a standpoint of they have slowed the speed limits down around and on campus. It is 20 through there. And thankfully, I can remember a few vehicle pedestrian accidents, but not a lot in that corridor, which kind of why it was surprising that this came from the legislature. Well, that is that is a good point of discussion, and that is we, we've been fortunate enough not to have um, a lot of serious issues at that intersection, although uh, crossing-wise, it is certainly the busiest intersection for pedestrian crossings right there at uh, Ivinson and 15th Street in the city, but we have not had a lot of issues. However, the city has realized and acknowledged that there, we could certainly do some better safety upgrades for pedestrians there. So we have, we have uh, right now in conceptual design a plan to redo Ivinson Street from 9 to 15th Street. And that plan also includes redoing all of that 15th and Ivinson intersection as well as that 15th corridor up to Willett Street. And the plan that the city has right now would involve um, doing some pedestrian safety improvements, raised, raised platforms, different signalization, that type of stuff, just to kind of step up the game because we realize that that's the, the busiest crossing uh, in the in the city. So, As you look at it, what are now the steps that kind of go forward? What are we looking at from a timeline perspective on something like this specific issue? Well, I think that from a city perspective, um, we're certainly going to put some public hearings or town hall type events, uh, at least one, maybe two, um, on the books here probably in June and July to gather that information, try to get some feedback from people that we can take from the legislature. Um, the city and university personnel continue to work together. I would imagine that UW and the city council will probably have at least one more joint meeting um, before UW's report is due to the legislature on November 1st.